All right. So everyone loves Tony Collette's performance in this movie to the mm. point that people were really upset that she and were just blasting the Academy of Motion Pictures that she didn't get nominated for Best Actress in 2019 for this 2018 film. Mm hmm. So you you brought that up a couple days ago. And so I looked up the slate of best actress. Maybe in another year, you could. I think you could make that argument. I don't think this year you could make the argument that she deserved to be there more than any of these people. Now, you made the argument to me via text that Yalitza Aparicio, maybe you'd give it to her over her in Roma. And I looked at my, and we'll talk about this more when we get into our top of the year lists. Mm -hmm. I looked at my list and indeed, I liked Hereditary more than I liked Roma. I mean, I know that just inherently, but... Mm -hmm. But even then, I made a little list of other people who I liked more than Tony Collette this mm -hmm. year that I would put in first. First being Natalie Portman in Annihilation. Oh, yeah, very good. Incredible. Thomasin McKenzie in Leave No Trace. Great movie. I don't know how to pronounce this woman's name, so I'm going to do my best. But I think it's Haldora Gerharo's daughter. So she's obviously Scandinavian mm -hmm. in the movie Woman at War, which is have you seen Woman at War? I have not. No. Oh, highly recommend. Really good. I heard that Jodie Foster wanted to direct an American version with herself in the lead, which oh. she, she'd be appropriate for the role. Yeah. Interesting. And then also Charlize Theron and Tully, I thought. could. Yeah, uh, she was very good. Uh, also, I can point to I, I'm one of the people who does think Tony Clip, but how about uh, Elsie Fisher, eighth grade? I thought was also excellent that year. That movie makes my skin crawl, but I can't deny what you're saying is right. I have a daughter in sixth grade. How do you, I mean, how do you think it makes me feel? <laughs> sure, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, 2018 was a great, great year. And well, who I, were the other who were the other four nominees? I know we oh, mentioned so, Yalitza from Roma, but who are the other four? So Glenn Close and The Wife. And I know people very, feel different things in The Wife. But I think that movie's awesome. It's very good. I really like it, too. I watched it on an airplane and I was like, this plane should not land while I am. watching this. <laughs> and I hate flying, but I still felt that way. Mm -hmm. Olivia Coleman in the favorite and we and you had mentioned like she's she might you could argue she's more of a supporting role in that movie mm -hmm. and I said and I stick by this then either Rachel Weiss or Emma Stone would be the lead and they're both better than Tony Collette I think oh, all I three think of them were great however you yeah and I said however you slice it yeah they're all they're all great I love Olivia Coleman I love the favorite so yeah yeah and I actually can't remember the other two uh the other two would be, would be Lady Gaga uh Star is Born it's a great movie yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Star is Born is great. Uh, and she's great in it. And oh, gosh. Oh, and the other one is uh, Melissa McCarthy. Can you ever forgive me? Who also is tremendous. And that's a really good movie. So, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it was a it was definitely a tough competition that year. And and I think part of the argument, too, is that, yes, people are passionate about Tony Collette uh, in this role, in this film. Um, and, and I again, she probably would have been part of my five, although I definitely see the argument that, yeah, all these women, there was a lot of great performances to choose from. But I think part of the larger argument is that the Academy ignores horror horror movies on the whole uh you know yeah. just kind of as a general rule and you know yeah. here was a horror movie with according to a lot of people or a lot of people feel like was even you know a step above horror movies and you know a great performance from a respected actor who already had an oscar nomination and who has appeared in like you know little miss sunshine and uh you know the sixth sense these best picture nominees so they're like if you know if they're gonna if they're gonna recognize horror you know this would be a time to do it and if they're not going to recognize this one then what do we have to do you know that i think that was sort of their frustration too like a, as a larger broader not attack but like you know just the, the academy's refusal to like really recognize horror movies Right. And I think that that's totally reasonable, especially given that in the past, and by the past, I mean, like before we were born, oh, mm -hmm. not not totally before we were born, but largely before we were born, there have been horror movies nominated for Academy Awards, like The Exorcist. Mm -hmm. And in our lifetime, Silence of the Lambs. Mm -hmm. Now, Silence of the Lambs, you could say is, is a horror thriller, but The Exorcist isn't. That's just a horrible, horrible horror movie. It is. Horror movie all <laughs> scare, still scares um, me. Yeah. But I guess around that time, it was happening more often because just a few years before that, you had Rosemary's Baby, which, you know, Ruth Gordon won Best Supporting Actress for, for that movie. Mm -hmm. But it's rare, you know, even with it those examples, it's still rare. Right, for sure. Although Silence of the Lambs, like, won every award. Yeah, that one swept up, swept. It was one of the only three movies have won uh, picture, director, lead actor, lead actress, and one of the screenplays, you know, original or adapted. And Silence of the Lambs is one of them. And then it's One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And it happened one night. Yeah. Those are the only three that have ever done it. And the other interesting thing about Silence of the Lambs is that it came out in February of the year it came out. Like it didn't come out like during the height of Oscar time, like most of the, the best pictures tend to. And it still stuck around all year and ended up winning all the awards. So kind of a kind of a cool little bit there. Yeah. Everything Everywhere All at Once also did that. Yep. Yeah. It was a March release and, and lasted through the whole year. Yeah. And then this year is kind of similar because you've got, I mean, it's not 
winter or spring, but you know, mm. summer blockbusters did that. So yeah, a couple of them. I think Tony Collette. Uh, anyway, I haven't even said what I feel about her. Uh, I thought she did a good job. I think that the material she's given is a bit. Look, she's she's playing it hysterical, and it's a role that is hysterical. But at times, I was like, it's just so much screaming. It's it's yeah. so <laughs> much screaming. She does it well, but I also thought because of the, and I think your explanation helps contextualize it a lot when it comes to like the genre stuff not winning. But she was praised so much that I was like, oh, everyone else in the movie must have sucked, but everyone's great. I guess it's interesting because it does seem like Ari Aster is going to be shut out of Os- of the Oscars forever based on just what he's interested in. Could be, yeah. Be it either horror or just really upsetting drama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, comedy in some in mm. some cases. Like Bo is Afraid is actually pretty funny. <laughs> Oddly funny, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a shame because he makes these stunning looking movies and i've been drawn into every one of them and it's a it's a it's a real shame that he doesn't get a lot of awards recognition yeah and hopefully it'll you know come for him someday i know scorsese has been a big champion of his work he says i think he says that astor is like the best young filmmaker working today so i mean he's wow. you know at least got some people in his corner so and again it's not all about oscars you know, you know it's good to have really interesting work recognized you know and i think ari astor is doing stuff that's just it's different from what yeah. anybody else is doing yeah I like it a lot. And I and like we've said, I hate horror, and yet I'm really drawn to him. I, I'm really interested in the work he's doing. 